Hello everyone, These, uh, this is the uh, review video for the study questions for Elizabeth Cady Stanton's Declaration of Sentiments. Number one, what relation does this document have to the Declaration of Independence? This document uh, is, um, it, it, it invokes the Declaration of Independence. It uses huge parts of the uh, Declaration of Independence word for word with some important changes. And it has the it has the structure of the of the thing, um, especially the you know the complaints. That is, instead of the in the Declaration of Independence in the original, uh, we have the preamble, and then we have the list of abuses that justifies the document. The list of abuses by uh, Great Britain against the U United States or the colonies. Um, this document is the list of abuses of men against women. So uh, it, it, it invokes the Declaration of Independence in this ironic way, maybe even a humorous way. Um, but it is meant to be a kind of a new Declaration of Independence, I think, but the independence of, of women from men. Number two, what does this document seek to do? I'm not really sure. You know, I mean, it's easier to say that in the original Declaration of Independence. The document was meant to officially make the break with the Kingdom of Great Britain and the United States becoming a new country. Declaration of Independence. We, know we are no longer ruled by you. Um, does this document seek to be similar in the sense that women are saying in America we are no longer ruled by men? I don't know. Uh, it's not as clear, but I, that's my guess. Um, but I don't know. It, it's not really clear what the document seeks to do, except to make public the kind of complaints that women justifiably have against men and the way that they're treated in contemporary society. Now, whether it's meant to be a, we now separate from all that and we're, we're entering something new, like the original Declaration of Independence, I don't know, but it's, it's a, you have to sort of, I guess, make your own choice in interpreting the, the purpose of the document. Number three, what is the nature, sorry for the typo, of the kinds of complaints that the document makes? Are they political or economic or cultural complaints? Um, I think they're all three. Um, there are political complaints. Most prominently, women don't have the right to vote. Uh, there are economic complaints. Most prominently, married women don't have control over their own property. And there are cultural complaints. Very interestingly, I think, there are some complaints that are neither legal nor uh, economic in nature. They are cultural in nature. I'm thinking of the complaint where it says that women are constantly um, undermined by men, um, that they are they are constantly uh, made to feel that they should be dependent upon men. That's not a legal complaint. That's not an economic complaint, really. That is a cultural complaint saying that the culture and its customs need to change. When it says that women are held to a different standard of morality, um, that is a cultural complaint. That's not something you can legislate, really. It's a change that needs to come over the country as a whole, and it's a change that needs to come over men's thinking and women's thinking to make that change. So I think that the document is a very wide ranging one. It does have political and economic goals. It wants to get the right to vote for women, which wouldn't happen for another, uh, since 1857, it wouldn't happen for another 70, 60 or 70 years. Um, it does want to change economic things, but it also wants to change the culture it wants to change the whole way that women are thought of and treated in this country and the whole way that we think about man-woman relations. So it's in many ways it harkens back to Wollstonecraft. Uh, it has similarities, I think, <coughs> to uh, Frederick Douglass. So Frederick Douglass, who attended <coughs> the convention that produced this document and uh, was uh, a big proponent of women's rights, Frederick Douglass. So it's, yeah. So I think it does, I think the answer, my answer to be that they are all three. They are political, economic, and cultural.